Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the 51% a show about women reshaping our world. Coming up, in Sweden, a controversial TV documentary reveals doctors carrying out illegal virginity tests on both women and girls. Also, we talk to French climate change activist Fania Noel on gender and global warming. And packing a punch, the young Arab woman who wants to mainstream female wrestling in the Middle East. But we begin in Sweden, where an undercover investigation has discovered doctors across the country are performing illegal examinations to find out if women and young girls have had sex. The Swedish program, Color Factor, or in English, Cold Fact, has revealed medical professionals agreeing to perform the test for religious reasons. Mark Thompson has more. Preparing to go undercover. These actors are about to visit a Swedish health centre it's been identified as one of many facilities across the country performing so-called illegal virginity tests. They're posing as an aunt with her translator, taking her young niece to the doctor against her wishes. Have you had sex with someone? I just want to know. The report for Color Factor or Cold Facts investigated three different facilities. At this specialist surgery on the outskirts of the capital, Stockholm, one doctor claimed the checks were a regular procedure. I will examine you like this. I've done this hundreds of times. I have examined lots of children and adults like this. That's despite scientists saying the checks aren't even a viable way of knowing whether someone has had sex. No, you can't see that. Not in any way. Having sex for the first time with someone can mean a lot of things, but it doesn't change the appearance of the body at all. The UN Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch say that checking a woman's virginity against her will can be compared to torture. For others, it's comparable to rape. A woman having her genitals examined against her will is abusive and that's that. It's the same as rape. The surgeries featured in the programme refused to be interviewed. They say they have taken the evidence seriously and have since forbid giving out so-called virginity certificates. Now, France has launched an unprecedented diplomatic drive to push nations both big and small towards a major climate change deal. This ahead of a Paris summit next month is being viewed as the next major make-or-break moment to reach agreement on what scientists are saying is the biggest threat to humanity. So how does climate change affect women particularly? With me to discuss this is activist Fania Noel from 350.org, a worldwide group committed to spread the word on global warming. Fania, thanks for being with us. Now we know that women make up the majority of the world's poor and of course are more dependent on men on natural resources for their livelihoods and survival. But can you give us some concrete examples of how in fact climate change is impacting impacting their lives. Yeah, for example, uh, women are the one uh, in charge of carrying water and provide water for the family member. So all the climate change impact in water will be impact on their life, on their work in their family, in their community, and also women are the one who is carrying the children. Uh, and when crises like her um, tsunami come they are the last one leave so they are the last one leaving the the home and they put their life in danger and they are more likely to uh, to be killed by um, tsunami earthquake than uh, men tell me what does 350.org do in order to specifically address the issue of women in the campaign to fight global warming uh, so 350 is more focused about uh, divest and uh, for the fossil free, so stop fossil fuel exploitation. And um, the, we're working uh, in the way to empower community and activists on the ground. Uh, the, the idea is that uh, activists, clim climate activists, but social activists, uh, shape the struggle. This, uh, they shape the struggle in the way to address in the particular context, because we, we can do this 
the same, propose the same solution in Kenya or in Australia and in the Pacific or Col uh, Colombia. So you're working with women on the front line? Uh, we're working on uh, women, people on the front line, community on the, on the front line, and give them the possibility with tool of the 350, uh, that org uh, tool and um, uh, our free access on the, our website to do action, to prepare a campaign, to make the voice loud and uh, politically and uh, to keep the struggle alive and keep it in underground. It's the same for the fossil, keep the struggle on the underground. Now, of course, we've got the summit coming up in Paris very yeah. shortly. <laughs> Are you optimistic or pessimistic that a deal is going to be reached? Um, I'm optimistic about the mobilisation of so, uh, social, uh, civil society, but I'm pessimistic about uh, the political uh, um, agreement. <laughs> Do you think we've passed the point of no return? Uh, no. I think if we have this nar narrative about past the point of no return, uh, we say, oh, people will say, OK, that just give up, I would take my car and we are all dying a day and no, we pass the point of no return to do nothing. It's, it's what about so now it's uh, the time uh, to do something and we we must do something with the cyber uh, society with people with people marching with people to action to show that we are the power we are the people we claim the power and we claim the the narrative and the struggle and we have to show all this uh, political uh, political and expert that we want a change we want a systemic change and not a one-to-one -one individual uh, change and it's for that I'm optimist because the march in New York show that people really care about the uh, about the, those issue and we should uh, keep it uh, the keep uh, going in the, in this way. And so the pressure is on for those politicians to reach an agreement? Yeah, the, the pressure is on and we will keep the pressure because we want to, to have the last word uh, on that. Fanny and Noah, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And finally, we're now going to meet a 17-year-old who's not your average teenager in Dubai. Rita Shama Sardine spends her free time packing punches with men in a wrestling ring. Claire Williams takes a look at how this young woman is determined to bring women's wrestling into the mainstream in the Middle East. She takes down her opponents and she breaks gender taboos. Meet Khida Shamasadeen, the 17-year-old wrestler living in Dubai, who's fighting to become an international pro. Um, I want to create the first ever female division in the Arab region. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to walk in here and then, you know, walk out without achieving anything because, you know, they say when you walk into a place, always leave it a little different when you leave. And that's what I'm going to do. In the ring, she's known as Joelle Hunter. At five foot four, her all-male opponents tower over her. And in fishnet stockings and hot pants, she's also been breaking dress code taboos. We're aware of the, um, you know, the difference in, in culture and the society here. And you know, we, we try to be respectful of that as, as much as we possibly can. But um, you know, there's a lot of women now who are interested in doing this. And she's really the one that's taking the first step and saying, hey, you know, I'm going to do this. It's OK. Come and join me. Born in Lebanon and raised in Saudi Arabia, Shama Sadin is now living in the United Arab Emirates. She's learning the part physical, part theatrical technique at the Dubai Pro Wrestling Academy in the hope of one day carving out a career in the US body, World Wrestling Entertainment. Her opponent, known as the Vigilante, thinks she has a good chance. She looks like a girl, she is a girl, but she doesn't fight like one. She, you know, she's very... Uh... She's very fierce in the ring, she's very strong, she's very passionate about this, so it's just, it's just the same as facing anybody else. She says she's committed not only to taking down her opponents, but also breaking new ground for young Arab women. 
a force to be reckoned with. And that's it for now. And if you'd like to comment on what you've just seen, you can head to our Facebook page. That's France 24, full stop 51%. Or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. Thanks for your feedback so far. And please keep those comments rolling in. In the meantime, we're going to leave you with photographs taken by Nana Kofia Akia from Ghana, who through his travels across Africa has chronicled the lives of women. A self-declared male feminist, he says his mission is to change the narrative about African women where they are often portrayed as victims of circumstance. So until our next program, bye for now.